Okay, hey everyone. Welcome to APN Lodge's Social Saturday. I'm Jeremy Zacharias. I'm our Associate of Business Strategy. Um, today, I will be talking to Jill Shields. Jill Shields has been like a mom to me. She is the most special woman in the world, and we're going to be discussing our RISE program. So our RISE program is a five-day immersive workshop, and it's for people that are feeling stuck, not good enough, full of guilt about something, or really just seeking to improve themselves. Um, I recommend it to everyone. Uh, my family can tell you that I've recommended that all of them go and do it. Uh, I think it's such a special program. Jill did it. She'll tell you a little bit more about it. Let me see if I could get her in here. Let's see, we're waiting on Jill to join. Jill Shields, Hello. thank you for joining us. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, how are you? What's going on? How's quarantine been Let's treating you? This. Um, quarantine has been pretty good. I hate to say it, but I've been doing a lot of work on myself and uh, really enjoying the time with my family and being with my kids. And um, I just hope everyone stays safe and the world gets better with this. This is a, a crazy pandemic. Nuts. I know. I think you're taking it in stride. There's a lot of people... Uh, who would take this time in quarantine sort of to lay in bed all day and take it easy. Right. Um, but I know that you haven't stopped and you're, you know, this great wellness person now. Uh, but let's talk about how you got. Well, let me just course. say one thing, you know, yeah. Because of the work that I've done with, uh, with APN and with just my own individual work, I'm able to deal with this, this pandemic in such a better way than I would have been before this. I would have been so nervous, so scared. What can I do? What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my family? And now, you know, I got to sit with it. I cannot control this situation. We cannot control this situation. It's out of our hands. We could do the best we can to help and, you know, be there for people that we love, but we are, we are not in control. This is a bigger picture than us. And, I couldn't uh, have said it any better myself. I think I need to hire you to be my therapist if you're taking <laughs> clients. Um, but let's go back, you know, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got to know the lodge and how you ended up in our RISE workshop. And again, for people that don't know, uh, our RISE workshop is a five-day workshop. Uh, and it's really for anyone. I think it's really for people who are looking to improve your, yourself. Uh, if you're feeling stuck, not good enough, feel guilt about something. But again, I really think it's for anyone. But Jill, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got to know the Lodge, how you okay. ended up in RISE. So I suffered from a broken heart. And a broken heart really is something that, that's true. And I never knew that that's a real thing. And it really was. My heart was broken. Uh, my partner, since I was 19 years old, uh, he passed of a, an opioid overdose. And I was crushed. I was crushed. I was fearful. I feared the unknown. I feared raising five kids by myself. Mm -hmm. I feared... I feared abandonment. I feared, I was angry. I, mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I was, I lost, I lost who I was, you know? I lost a sense of who I was and I was so connected to him. I was so mm -hmm. codependent and in love with him in our chaotic, and it was a chaotic life, but you know, <laughs> I we, know. Ma we made it work and yeah. You know, without him there, I was like, what am I going to do? And because of this, and actually my daughter, Tyler, it was like a year, almost a year since Dennis passed. And uh, it, it was like maybe July. My daughter went to a medium and she came home and she told me, she asked the guy, you know, how's my mom going to be? I'm, I'm nervous about my mom. And the guy's like, she's going to be all right. 
you know, it's not her first rodeo, but mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to go on a rodeo. I'm done. I'm like, yeah. I need some help because I can't do this by myself. And I already gave the kids that year of me. Like I really did. I got them. Settled. Right. I got them and, in college. I got them like, and I was and not if I can interject. Yeah. I yeah. think you were suffering from what I saw. I think you were suffering on the inside. You were sort of being that superhero for everyone else, you know, from right. my point of view, it seemed like you were going on with life as usual. You were being the superhero that your kids needed. Um, but I think you took that year and finally you were able to focus on yourself a bit. Right. And, and, and that's, it really was a year. I was like, and actually they say, you know, grief has these, these five stages of grief. I don't want to go into all that stuff, but there are stages and, and anger is one of them and, and guilt is one of them. And, and then at the end, it's like there's forgiveness and like, this is, this is what it is. And you got to move on and you got to, you got to have the good to get the memories and all this. And I just, I was in super mode. You know, I didn't want anyone to, to stop school. I didn't want any of the kids mm -hmm. to stop their lives. I wanted them to move forward. And that's what their dad would have wanted. And, yeah. and they, let me tell you, these kids, like, they are powerhouses. And I know. they are doing better than they've ever done in their lives. And uh, I, I'm so proud of them. And, and, and anyway, it was time for me. And I actually called Noah and I was like, what should I do? And he mm -hmm. gave me a couple of different things to do. And, and you guys just started up with APN. And uh, I signed up for the program. And signing up for the program also said, which is a very big part of my story. Uh, they said like, and, and it wasn't, this was in July, at the end of July. And it wasn't until the program was, I think, October, or November. I'm not sure when I went. But yeah. they said, they got recommended like 15 days before you come to this program. Just be totally clear. Don't drink. You know, don't smoke. Don't take any other mind-altering drugs. And... I was like, you know, it's July. I'm like, I'm done. I'm going to give, I'm yeah. changing everything up because when I drank, like I was rolling on the floor, crying, missing mm -hmm. him, yeah. putting on what you're not supposed to do. I put on the songs that reminded <laughs> me of him. And I would be like, what? You know, what? Mm -hmm. give me an, and, and once like I cut that out and started taking care of myself, like, this is this wasn't helping. You know, I was I was reveling in the grief when I was alone. Not yeah. when I was with everyone else, but when I was alone, I was I was really deep deep deep. So so that was the beginning. Uh July 1st. I'm actually 10 months sober. Like 10 months Congratulations. today. Thank you. I mean, and it wasn't like, you know, a crazy person who who was no, not at Off all. Off the rails, but I right. didn't want to get to my lowest low. I didn't want to have people say, oh, you have to go to your rock bond. I'm like, no, I was a partier. Yeah. I love to go out, but I didn't want to get there, and I was done, and I'm, I just had turned 50. So, so Dennis right. passed. And, and you're a good time regardless of whether you're drinking or not. Well, you know? that's right, Joe. Yeah, there I you am go. a body. <laughs> but to, I, I just, this is how Tyler turned 20, a lot of just first. Dennis passed on August 10th. Tyler turned 25 on August 16th. Mm -hmm. My girls turned 21 on September 25th. I turned 50 on October, like October 3rd. Like it was yeah. just like all these firsts for us. And I was like, okay, I've, I've had the, well, thinking I'm going to live to 100. I said, I had the first, you know, half of my life this way. I'm going to try something different. So, it was it was pretty amazing. It took a little while for the habitual stuff, like go out to dinner and you want to, okay, I'm gonna order a drink. But that's yeah. also part of this stuff, like that I've learned. There's habits and things that you're used to doing, and it's baby steps. You're not gonna change in a day, you know. I'm not gonna was meditation. I'm never doing meditation. I don't like yoga. I'm gonna try to start doing yoga. That's one yeah. of the things everyone says. But you know, anyway, what's your question, Jeremy? So. You go to Rise. I think you sort of don't know what to expect. Um, what's yeah. that experience like? Because I think it's different for us at APN to talk about it than somebody who's actually been through it. So you, you go know, out to Vail, Colorado. What's the experience right. like? Right. So I go out to Vail, Colorado. First of all, I'm like, 
I don't like to go anywhere by myself because I, I do have these weird abandonment issues. I, I came home from every uh, teen tour I went on. I, mm-hmm. you know, left the city. I left college and came to NYU just to be close to my mom. I, I was in the city. I moved basically across the street from my mom. Mm-hmm. I, I, but I was like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I have to take care of myself. And I got on a plane and by myself and I flew to Vail. I, well, I guess Eagle, or I don't even know where I flew into. I think I flew into Denver. Yeah, and I think you flew into Denver and we picked you I up. I met uh, a beautiful bus, picked me up, and there were some other girls on the bus. I think I said hi and took a nap. Like, I just <laughs> passed out. I think yeah. it was just being nervous. I passed out and we got there. And, oh, my God. It was the most beautiful scenery. Mountains and and a beautiful house, and we come in, there's a fire going, and I was like, this ain't so bad. Yeah. And, uh, and there was food waiting for us, and I felt a little better, and, and so I, the first night that everyone was chill and kind of like talked about what's the program. We had five people in my program, mm-hmm. which was really nice, you know, it was a, a nice, secure group. Right, which is what we're gonna do going forward too. That's the size of all the groups. We wanna keep right. it personal and intimate. For everyone. Right, because I went to a program before also, which was a great program as well, but that was more hardcore and bigger. And APN was more, at this point, like everything I think happens for a reason. I had to do that first program to be okay to do APN. Like APN kind of was like, I kind of was a baby. You know, mm-hmm. I was in a cocoon sort of there. I wasn't going anywhere. There was no no one to see, nothing to do. You're on this beautiful in this beautiful mountain, and the 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 therapists were kind of like mom and dad, and just taking care of us. All our needs were met, so mm-hmm. we just had to do the work. Yeah, like, I didn't have to think for anything else. And also with this program, I was able to use my computer and phone at night, so I was able to call my kids. So I didn't feel that anxiety. You didn't feel isolated. I didn't feel isolated in that in that sense. With the other place, I was like, "Geez, are they going to be okay?" And then you know all that mm-hmm. scary mm-hmm. stuff, which which was my trying to control the situation, which I'm learning I I can't control anything. Yeah, but um, I really felt good at at Rise. I felt great. Yeah, I, I didn't want to so leave. What was, <laughs> what was the the typical day? Like, are you sitting in a classroom all day and somebody's lecturing no, you? What's there's no, like, what okay, are, what there's, are you doing out there? Well, Rise is in a beautiful. When you think about, well, if anyone wants to look up like luxury ski resorts, if you want to rent a home, that's what that's what it was. It was a beautiful house on a mountain. So. We in the okay. You wake up in the morning, seven o'clock, and I am not an early bird. I am now, ten months mm-hmm. later, but I was not an early bird. And I got my ass up, and every morning we had something. It was yoga, tai chi, some kind of meditation, some some moving the body, I guess, to get our minds ready for the deep dive that we were gonna do. Yeah. So after that, you come upstairs, and it was like great breakfast. Amazing! These great chefs come in with fresh food and vegan stuff. If you wanted that, like whatever anyone wanted, uh, they had. So yeah. I had breakfast like every morning. I, I was eating the whole time. I loved it. And then you went back to you and we changed if you wanted to. I basically lived in my usual outfit, which is um, you know a black tank top and black leggings, and mm-hmm. that was that. That's what I lived. In. I was surprised you didn't show up in that today. I I am. <laughs> Right now. Yeah. So um, anyway, so we, okay, so then the next thing is like nine o'clock, we all got to in for a session. And mm-hmm. it, like the first day we talked about what, what trauma is. And which, you know, I, I didn't really realize that what I was going through at that time was purely a real traumatic experience. Like trauma comes in many forms. And whatever form you feel, that's your own form. You could have sexual abuse. You can have been in a tsunami. You could have had seen a gunfight. Whatever it is, right. you could have had a, been a kid 
who wasn't nourished by your parents. Right, really, you could so have everybody a, has some connection. Everybody to has their own, and it's how you deal with it. So I obviously wasn't dealing with my traumatic experience well. And my, we can discuss this later, but it, was, it, came, it stemmed, the, the, the loss of Dennis, stemmed also, it triggered another issue in my life that I hadn't been willing to look at. Mm -hmm. um which we went through at the program and i you know i came out great uh so then we had after a little informational session and then we had lunch which is another great experience and then we went back to the group or we went for privates with um one of the two therapists and mm -hmm. i don't really want to say what happens at rise in the sense that it's like a journey. Yeah. And I, I don't really want to give it away because yeah. it's like, it's kind of like you kind of have to have a little bit of the unknown, but no, you're going to be great. And it was that, like, I didn't know what I was doing when I was going. And that was part of it. Like, you know, you have to experience the process kind of like, that's what it is. But it was a very wonderful process. And you go back from the beginning of like birth to now, and you really look at, I guess you look at habits, you look at things that you didn't want to look at. And that's a huge issue. Like there's so many things I didn't want to look at in my life or about myself. Like, like I right. said, I had five kids. I had five dogs. I had a couple of birds. I had, you know, a couple <laughs> of guinea pigs and rabbits. Yeah. Any kid who wanted to sleep over slept over the uh, Yeah, chaos. I was going to say, you I had a few myself, more kids sleeping over. Right. Yeah. I kept myself in chaos. I loved it. But chaos maybe sometimes isn't so good. And yeah. I'm realizing that now. Like quiet and peace and um, sitting with yourself is really important. Because if you don't, if you don't sit with your feelings and you keep on going and keep on going, it's going to hit you. Sometimes it could hit you with your back go out. It could hit you with migraines. It could hit you with, you know, some kind of mental illness. It could hit you with addiction. Like, so I was living thinking that that's, that's, that's good. I mean, I am like a little Dr. Do little do Mr. Whatever you want to call me. I love children and love people, but I needed to take time for myself. Right. Which side note, I think that this quarantine time sort of has shown a lot of people that that this life that they were so used to of running around and, you know, meeting this person for dinner and going to this store. And, and sometimes you don't actually need all of that hustle and bustle. Oh, like a hundred percent. And, you know, I didn't even like doing those things. Like I, I actually, I hate going to restaurants. I, and maybe that's why I, it was when I went to parties, I was a partier because I didn't even like being there. It's like, I needed something right. exciting. I like sitting with my friends, hanging out yeah. with them, talking the, to them. The Jill I know, like she likes going and getting like a few frozen yogurts and like hanging out at home, but you still were doing all those other things. You still were going out to dinners and going right. to people's parties. and Right. And it was like too much for me because I was still trying to live the way I lived. And you know, so much of my, another part of when I went to Rise too, I mean, I don't want to take this part out of the story, is like, you know, I was pretty much of a private person. Yeah. And for the five years previous to Dennis's death, like my anonymy, or if that's even a, anonymity. Anonymity, the word, yeah, close enough. Was kind of, um, you know, taken away from me and my family yeah. and my narrative, which wasn't even a, you know, true narrative was, was put out there right and it's like i was bombarded with stuff that i wasn't even it wasn't my it, well this wasn't my story that i was telling so that was also like shook my core like i would always be worried about what's the next thing what's the next thing i, I have like ptsd like, yeah. what's the next thing that's going to hit me so yeah. it's like oh uh, oh uh, and it, it, it was just tough it was yeah. really 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 tough but you know, and another thing is like, I don't think it's fair that people who 
who go through shit, people who go through deaths, people who go through trauma, people who have a kid who's sick, people, why do we, why do we become the others who then get better and learn tools that everyone should have? Like, it's not yeah. fair. Like, you got to go deep and dark to get out and learn these tools. Like, it's not fair that they don't t- teach in schools. Right. It's like you're kids, preparing for like a how fire. To, yeah. How to You're deal. preparing for a fire, but the fire's already going. Like, that's not right. the right how time to, to prepare for the like, fire. Like, breathe. Teach people how to breathe. Like, if you breathe, like, four seconds in hold it for seven seconds and let it out eight seconds like your anxiety level just comes down it can change the rest of your day you could change the rest of your day and and if you're feeling like crazy emotion like it only lasts for 20 minutes Mm -hmm. you know that it's like that's a that's a apn fact like that that it's going to go away you just got to sit with it and you're going to feel it and then it will go away if you don't sit with it and you go off to uh, do your usual numbing, which could be eating like an animal. It could be gambling. It could be having sex with the wrong people. It could be watching Instagram all day long. Like those are numbing things. Th- yeah, that's, definitely. You know, there's so playing video games all day long. Like that's productive. That's living right. an examined life. That's getting knowledge. That's growing. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. So, like, anyway, I, I am off to ten, ten. So, all right. You finish Rise, right? Was how how are you feeling at the end of Rise? You go through these five days. Are you then, you know, you feel more ready to tackle the world? What what's uh, that like? Well, well, what was great is when you leave, they give you um, Ryan and Malia, where my therapist mm-hmm. they. They give you a list of things that you, the suggestions that you could do on your own. And one of the things you learn at Rise is just within the five days, they keep you on a regimen, basically. You know, you get up at a certain time, you do your things at a certain time, and you end your day at a certain time. So you try, when you leave, you try to do these things yourself when you get home. And a lot of the things to do were like gratitude lists journaling i'm still not into journaling just because like i don't know i feel like journal yeah, you I don't have know. to find what's right for you right i want to do it but it's like i, I i'm scared that that journals out all the time so I'm gonna <laughs> my journal yeah i gotta get a lock on my journal but um journaling gratitude meditation oh my god if i have to give you my biggest takeaway yeah hit me meditation is rock solid amazing game changer right i and if used you're to be reactive talking about it what's your meditation practice like like what do you do okay so i my friend john um first told me to because i never really i didn't know how to do it so he said i should go on an app called waking up and that's mm-hmm. waking up with sam harris the guy's a genius and I, there's a 50 day beginning, like how to meditate and it's slow. It's a slow process. And basically I, after the 50 days, I kind of knew how to do it. And I stayed with this for, for 10 months. I do, I still do Sam Harris every day, but one of my friends told me to get the app calm. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm not getting calm. What's on TV. It's the best thing ever. Yeah. It's great. They they also do what we did that something on calm that they asked you to do at rise like when you walked into the room the therapist said like where are you like they give you five different like are you angry are you are you feeling loved are you feeling safe are you feeling there's and so the the app you also see where you are and then over a time you could see where you were that week were you, how were you were you were you distracted were you just, so they have a lot of stuff they have sleep meditations they have it's just a really good app so I'm doing both of those now. And I'm getting pretty good at it. Like I feel like I feel hot sometimes when I'm doing this because I'm feel I feel like the blood moving through my body. Yep. I feel my brain opening up and sometimes like it opens up and I'm like, Hey God, you know, come, what do you, what do you got for me? Mm-hmm. What can I do for you today? How can I be loving? How could I help the people I love? How can I be the best me? It's like, I always had 
this kind of spiritual something in me. I, w- I was an avid reader. I am an avid reader. Yeah. And uh, I would read these books and I, I'd, I'd, I'd rip a page of the book. Like if I liked what something I said in the book, I ripped the page. And then I'd go back and write down the quotes. But I was so in my chaos and working, and I, I'm an interior designer, I love that too, but I was so in my chaos that I didn't know how to plug in to this like something, I don't know, divine spirit, life, love. I didn't know how to do it. And it's like, mm-hmm. I'm learning now that those are the, the mo- to me, those are the most important things in life, you know? Yeah. Love. Yeah. And uh, accepting people for who they are. And that's hard, you know? Definitely. Especially when you have children, I think, too. I mean, I don't have kids, so maybe it's hard right. for me to say. But I think you want certain things for your kids that maybe they don't want for themselves, and you well, have to accept a- that. Actually, well. my daughter my daughter and I went to Ryan um, after the program. Like, they also have life coaching after right. uh, in Rise. So if you want to, you know go beyond you, you can so I brought one of my daughters with me and oh my god I'm fearful of this and I'm fearful of that he's like Jill your husband passed away just as you were becoming I still have a 13 year old at home but the other four are older mm-hmm. uh, just as you're becoming like an empty nester and you're used to like holding on right you got you gotta let go you got I'm like oh that's scary <laughs> you know it's yeah. scary and and he's like you're not, it's not like, okay. One thing about fear that I learned to rise also is that if you are fearful of something and you want to control it, you're thinking, oh, I want to control this kid. I don't want this kid doing those things. That has nothing to do with the kid or your friend or your mother or, your, or the guy at work. It has to do with you and right. what you're nervous about, what you're scared about. Like, I don't like what you're doing. And you don't want to say, because I feel scared or I'm scared you're going to get hurt, or I'm scared you're going to lose your job, or I'm scared. It's it's about how I'm feeling. So it's not really about how, what's going on with that person. It's about me. So I've learned that too. Like I got to shut up and let like life do what life does and let these kids and grow and be who they are. And they really, wow. They've, they're amazing. They're all incredible, for sure. Um, so from your point of view, you went through Rise. I think it's different, again, from what, than us at APN saying it. Who do you think Rise is good for? Who would you recommend it to? Um, you know, anybody. A- anybody. Mm-hmm. Anybody. 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 Everybody. Everybody. Mm-hmm. anybody you know who could afford it anybody you know I, I would put like a a fund together like if someone who couldn't do it like who really right. needs it anybody because there there's something within all of us that's un like un that we could unplug and 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 become better and become our best selves like that like, why, why are you living? Are you living? Are you just living to live? Or are you living to gain knowledge? Are you, get, are you living to learn? Are you living to help? Are you living to give service? Are you living, or are you just going to like hang out and watch TV, go to work and come back and- Yeah, the same or thing. Or do you want to grow? Right, I mean, be better. even reading, reading, reading about history. Look what's going on in our freaking country right now. Like, mm-hmm. it's sick, but- like looking back on history and then you could, it, things could, puzzles could, you know, come together. You can understand things more instead of just being reactive and, and say, oh, what's going on is wrong or whatever. It's just, there's just so much more to life than just being. Yeah. You want know, to, you want to, so, you want to become. I yeah. Think. Yeah. And I would agree. I think Rise, again, I've recommended it to everyone. And I, I think anybody can benefit from it and, uh, as Jill alluded to, is if maybe it's not uh, within your means, we do have a scholarship fund at APN for those that can't afford it to come. But I really do think anybody can benefit from it. Jill, 
I've already taken up 30 minutes of your Saturday. Oh, I know. I'm so sure you have a ton to of plans. <laughs> um, do you have any last words for, for everyone? You know, anything you want to leave our audience with today? You know, you're all worth it. And um, you all can do the work. You all can go inside. You all can dig deep and uh, live a free life. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm thinking about getting a tattoo. Is that bad, Jeremy? I want to write like know. freedom or free. I shouldn't advise anyone. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't know. I, I really appreciate you joining us any today. Any questions, Jeremy? Do we have any questions? Yeah, yeah does anybody viewers? have any questions? Um, you know, Jill, I think if interior design doesn't work out, I think you have a future doing this. I think we would hire you here. You've said it much better than, than I could have. Uh, Alicia Nestor says no tattoo. Um, <laughs> But but with that, uh, thank you for joining us, Jill. All Thanks, right. everybody, for watching. Um, have a good Saturday. Thanks.